The Business Review brings you top financial news developments, influencing financial markets, international currencies, commodities, global commerce, tourism, and the other economic events from around the globe. The output and sales of trucks are both growing rapidly with a stronger recovery in China's commercial vehicle market after the drop from the COVID-19 pandemic. In the production workshop of a commercial vehicle manufacturer based in Beijing, heavy trucks are being assembled and ready to roll off lines. The factory can now produce 480 heavy trucks a day. That's an increase of 20% compared with the same period of previous years. From January to November in 2020, the output and sales of commercial vehicles in the country totaled 4,721,000 and 467,000 units with a year-on-year -year growth of 22.2% and 20.6% respectively. From April to October, the production and sales of vehicles increased more than 30%, greatly outperforming the average level of the industry in China. That's according to the latest data released by the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers. Shoppers washed their hands and sterilized their smartphones in the streets of Tokyo's posh Ginza district on Saturday, December 19th, using hand-washing stations that a Japanese startup hopes will revolutionize access to clean water and better hygiene. WOTA Corp set up 20 of its wash machines near popular Ginza stores in an initiative with a district association aimed at encouraging shoppers to wash their hands to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The machines do not require connection to running water and do not use fresh and wastewater tanks instead. They recycle the water through a three-stage process of membrane filtration chlorine and deep ultraviolet irradiation. On average, 20 litres of water provides around 500 washes and the filters should be changed after 2000. Wash also has a built-in device that cleans smartphones using 20 to 30 seconds of ultraviolet light exposure, the time it takes to thoroughly wash your hands. China's forex market turnover stands at 183.73 trillion won during the first 11 months of the year, according to data released by the State Administration of Foreign Exchange on Friday. In November alone, the country's forex market turnover reached 18.99 trillion yuan. Specifically, the turnover of forex transactions between banks and their clients totaled 2.75 trillion yuan, while that of the interbank forex transactions stood at 16.24 trillion yuan. The cumulative transaction volume of spot market was 8.8 .8 trillion yuan and of derivatives 10.9 trillion. Meanwhile, China's trade in goods recorded a surplus of 340.2 billion US dollars in the first three quarters this year. That's up 12% according to earlier in the year. Many Chinese auto component manufacturers have seen a rise in orders as the country recovers from the fallout of the COVID-19 epidemic. According to data released by the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers, China's export value of auto parts grew by 7.8% from October to 5.96 billion US dollars in November, up 41.9% from a year ago. In the casting workshop of one wheel hub production plant in East China's Jinghua City, all of its production lines are running at full capacity to fulfill the overwhelming orders from overseas customers. In a car shock observer producer in East China's Taizhou City, workers are busy meeting orders as the company has seen an increase in orders since the beginning of July. Chinese toy exporters were hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic earlier this year and have seen a small recovery in the second half. According to data released by China Toy and Juvenile Products Association, 
China's monthly export growth rate of toys was negative from January to June due to the pandemic. The figures have turned positive since July, with the rate was 21.1%. In the first 10 months, total toy exports reached 26.36 billion US dollars, with the cumulative growth rate at 1.4%. Last month, toy exports kept growing to 3.89 billion US dollars, an increase of 50% from a year ago. Industry experts said the pandemic has driven up the sales of some toys designed to play at home or in the yard and attributed that growth partly to the holiday season. According to a report released by the Chinese Academy of Engineering, or the CIA, China ranked fourth globally in Manufacturing Power Development Index and registered the fastest overall improvement in 2019. According to the report on China's Manufacturing Power Development Index of 2020, the Manufacturing Power Development Index consists of four items, including scale development, quality and benefit, structural optimization, and sustainable development. The CIA report showed that China is the only country that has achieved continuous increase in the sub-item of quality and benefit. The report stated, China ranked fourth in 2019, after the United States, Germany and Japan with the largest increase of 18.53% from 2012 to 2019. The report also suggested that China should invest in building a manufacturing power and promote the transformation from a manufacturing country to a manufacturing power during the 14th five-year plan period, that is 2021 through 2025. Scientists uncovered a giant dinosaur thigh bone in Tugong City, southwest China's Sichuan province this week. A former paleontologist noticed a clue of dinosaur fossil while passing by a construction site on Monday. He informed the Zigong Dinosaur Museum, located less than one kilometer from the site. Relevant experts of the museum arrived quickly and uncovered a 1.1-meter-long femur fossil of Swarapot dinosaur dating back about 160 million years. Archaeologists successfully dug the fossil out of the rock on Wednesday and sent it, which weighs about 150 to 200 kilograms, to the Zigong Dinosaur Museum for further research. Nicknamed as Hometown of Dinosaurs, Zigong sits on top of a large number of variety of dinosaur fossils. Archaeologists have uncovered fossils at 161 excavation sites in the city, which covers over 4,000 square kilometers. Such density is rarely seen even in the world. This new excavation site, less than one kilometer away from the museum, still has its value to be further explored. This brings us to the end of this episode of the Business Review. We hope to see you again tomorrow with news of stock markets, economic conferences, commodities, currencies, regional and international finance news, and much more.